everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk about GR, a plotting framework for both Python and Julia. Well, maybe most of you don't know about GR. Matplotlib is a working horse in the Python world, uh, but there are good reasons why we uh, made a ch choice to use another software which we developed in our group. Uh, GR is completely written in C, and this uh, makes it very performant, and it's capable of presenting a continuous data stream, so I will show it later. We cannot only uh, vi visualize static data, but, only, but also uh, dynamic data sets. It has built-in support both for two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics, and you really use the same graphics container to visualize both of these uh, two worlds. Uh, I think that's also unique to the GR framework. Uh, there's support for different uh, programming languages, also those which are very popular in the data science world like Python or Julia, and even JavaScript. Maybe I should mention that we also support Fortran, but I don't want to enter the danger zone here. <laughs> uh, then we have several backends uh, for other bigger software packages. Uh, for example, you can GR, use the GR framework as a backend for Matplotlib, which makes Matplotlib much faster, or for PlotS, uh, which is the main plotting system for the Julia language. Uh, also, we provide inter interoperability with several graphical user interfaces, such like Qt4, Qt5 is currently work in progress, WX widgets, and GTK. So, for sure, uh, we also uh, have, uh, can use our software in web applications like Jupyter, and I have several demos, demos demonstrating this later. So let's first start with GR as a backend for Matplotlib. You can combine the power of Matplotlib and GR. So you can mix uh, Matplotlib commands with uh, commands which are very specific to the GR framework. And since version 1.5, I think you can simply define an environment variable and then you can switch to our backend if it's installed. Uh, it's shown here how to to call our backend. This will signific significantly improve the performance of uh, your Matplotlib applications, especially if you are producing lots of output, for example, PDF, uh, PNG, S, S, uh, VG, and all these things. Uh, you can create plots both containing two and three dimensional uh, graphics elements from different packages, so you can mix Matplotlib, GR, and probably other packages. And a big advantage is that you can produce video contents on the fly. Maybe those of you who know about Matplotlib, you also have to write an animation layer, and uh, that's not uh, required for GR. You can, uh, with, with the GR framework, you can produce animations on the fly just by adding a single line of code. I have an example later. These are some outputs from the GR backend, which are our original Matplotlib demos, uh, and you see there's no difference to the uh, outputs you might generate with TJ, AGG, or other backends, which are very popular in Matplotlib. We also produ uh, provide uh, support for the new color maps, uh, which uh, have been introduced also in 1.5, or I think 2.0, I'm not sure, and you can use them uh, without any problems. Uh, the most uh, popular method to use, to use our framework, I think, is to use a MATLAB-like plot interface. Those of you who have uh, some knowledge about MATLAB will see uh, these commands here, and we try to be as close to their <coughs> API as possible. Sometimes it's not possible because the language are quite different. Uh, whether I'm showing here Julia demos, as in this case, or Python demos, this doesn't matter. You can adapt the code by just uh, small changes to any language. 
and you will have the same calls for all <coughs> these uh, vi visualization programs here. In this case, uh, we have a combined plot of a scatter diagram with a fitted curve. You can produce uh, scatter diagrams with, with, with alpha channels, with transparency. You can produce legends, and the syntax is exactly like you are, like, like uh, it is uh, defined in Mat MATLAB. Uh, this is a bigger example. Uh, we read a, a text file with, with uh, some Terra data here and use a contour F. This means a filled contour plot function to produce uh, this uh, image here, which is really pretty fast. And uh, here you see the first three-dimensional demonstration of a su surface plot. And uh, the main thing is that you simply add one line to gen generate a movie from this uh, scene here. You can specify the figure size and then simply use one call to create a surface plot, which you can, you can see it here is very fast, and I will even show this in the browser later. Uh, the speed is uh, much, much uh, faster than you might be uh, when you can observe it in, in, in Matplotlib. Okay, there are also functions to produce ISO surfaces. Uh, in this case, uh, I omitted the code uh, which created the uh, density mask here uh, and only showed the uh, relevant uh, plotting commands. And with this command, you can then create such an ISO surface. Uh, in this case, it's uh, written in Julia, but we have the same demo on our website in written in Python. As mentioned before, you can mix two-dimensional, three-dimensional scenes. You see, uh, you can here see three different parts. There's a part which contains uh, simple MATLAB-like commands. There's a part containing three-dimensional commands and uh, a part containing very basic commands to plot uh, a line graph, and uh, you can then uh, produce such uh, visualizations uh, on the fly. For example, this histogram could also have been uh, created by uh, Matplotlib. Uh, I think such uh, at molecular plots are not possible right now, uh, but in this case, you can mix them as you want. Another very popular way to work with the GR framework is to use the interact uh, module. That means that you uh, have used interact or react in, in a Jupyter notebook uh, to uh, move the graphics uh, with some sliders or to change the color maps as shown here. Okay, the resolution is not very good. Uh, hopefully you can see what's happening, what's going on. But I'll show this later uh, in a live demo. So you can see that it works uh, as shown here. And the performance is really that way here, uh, so you can even produce three-dimensional graphics in your browser and uh, change the uh, rotation and tilt ang angles and all these kind of stuff. Uh, we also have transpiled our complete software to JavaScript. This might sound crazy, I know, but it worked. This uh, allows us to use our software also in JavaScript code snippets, as, as shown here. So you can embed it into a Jupyter notebook uh, as some JavaScript code, and you get even more performance, as shown before, because JavaScript is much faster than any other software I have seen before. Uh, I hate it, but it is, uh, that's a fact. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> uh, Another way would be to simply to, to display a GR display list in the browser, but this is not uh, the uh, primary aim of this. Uh, I mentioned that we support several graphical user interfaces. One of them is GTK. Well, there's only this text here, but you can uh, add any widget or any uh, button or, or control widget to, to generate your plots, and you see the same plot commands as you have seen in other examples. There's all the same syntax, and 
You don't have to change your code. You can simply copy and paste it into a GTK or, in this case, PyQt application. Uh, you have to tell the Qt system, uh, uh, the GR framework, uh, which workstation type to use. In this case, uh, there's a maybe cryptic type of 381, which means that we want to use a PyQt window. And uh, you have to obtain the, the widget ID where you want to plot, and then you can start plotting uh, with the commands you have uh, seen before. You can, for example, use uh, Qt to select a region of interest or use the cursor keys to move through different images which are part of an instrument data set here. Uh, you also can use GR framework and Atom to, this is a powerful IDE. Um, maybe only the Julia users know about Atom, but uh, it could also be used for, for Python. And it has uh, the, the advantage that you can use uh, inline graphics as, as shown here. So the, your plot is uh, shown really in your uh, Atom window. The same applies to the iTerm. Those of you who have a Mac might use iTerminal and uh, with a GR framework you can produce uh, inline graphics within your iTerminal. Even movies or animations will be shown in an iTerm. Again, this is a Julia demo, but you can also do it in, in Python. Then we have several three-dimensional uh, modules, for example, to, to visualize uh, molecules, like in this case. Uh, these are simple commands to draw a molecule from an XYZ file, which will be read and then uh, be visualized with a stick and ball a model like here, and you can create uh, a movie on the fly or see it uh, while you are running this loop here. In this case, uh, it's uh, plain Python code, and uh, it can be rendered very, very fast. And if you want a better resolution or a better quality, you can export this scene into Poffray and you have much more lighting support and you, you can use it for your publications. Uh, right now we are working on rendering spins. Uh, in, my, in our institute uh, there's a lot of scientists uh, uh, working on spintronics topics and uh, as you can see here we can visualize uh, spins uh, from, from by, by uh, those arrows which are colored by, and by the velocity vectors which we have uh, given here. So at this point I would like to make some interactive demos. Hopefully the resolution is good enough. Okay. This is the example I showed in the demos, and uh, I mentioned that you can export uh, the scene into a Poffray image, but you can also export it into a HTML5 scene, so you can move it in your browser and rotate it uh, using WebGL, a WebGL-capable browser. So the resolution is not very funny out. I'll do my best. Okay. Here I'm going to define a Z vector. Then call the manipulate function uh, macro. This is again a Julia example, but the same applies to, to Python. And you can then use uh, interact uh, demo to rotate this surface here in your browser. It's a little bit flickering, I don't know why, normally it should not happen. And it's fast enough to visualize even complex 3D scenes in the browser. Okay. Maybe you remember the atomic orbitals demo I showed. 
I will run it as a block. And you can see that it's really fast. You will calculate uh, about 180 isosurfaces here and then render them within the browser. Also, this example is present on the website as a Python script. So don't feel confused if I'm only showing Julia code here. So my last live demo is a presentation of a DICOM file which uh, contains CT data, which is then, okay, a little, it's a little bit too small now. Uh, okay, so you can change the angles here for visualizing the data, and you can even change the ISO value, which is used to create the, the plots here. So this is currently really calculated in, in real time. And uh, for those uh, number of points, it still works in the browser and it's fast enough. OK, so that were the live demos. I have even more, but I think time is running away. Five minutes, OK. So let me try. To show some signal processing demos. So in this case, you can see I uh, read the mic data, microphone data, and visualize it in real time. So it's already was. You can see it here. And uh, the software is fast enough to do all these things, even with some peak detection and Fourier analysis uh, in real time. OK. So let's continue the presentation. There are other programs using the GR framework, for example, a molecular dynamics program called PyMoldin, which we use to visualize so-called vacancies or cavities in, uh, in phase change materials. And this is a very complex program, completely written in Python, with a lot of uh, computing stuff in C. But uh, in this case, it's, the visualization stuff is completely written in Python. Uh, as we have a backend for Matplotlib, we also have a backend for the Julia uh, software, which for the for plots.gl, which is the most popular uh, plotting software in the Julia world, I think. And you can produce these uh, plots here, which are much faster, as users say, than the, the uh, other packages which are offered in the Julia plotting environment. So what are our current activities? Uh, well, right now we want to uh, go away from our uh, Visual Studio uh, Windows uh, uh, version and use uh, a Mingwei toolchain to create a Windows uh, package of our software. Uh, which seems to be much easier, especially if you want to use continuous integration. It's uh, a hard job to, to use a Windows machine for that purpose. And uh, also we want to improve the build and deployment process uh, by offering more self-contained GR packages. In the Julia world, I already have uh, re realized that uh, you can, in, in Julia, you can uh, install GR in in, in seconds, and it works uh, out of the box because I provide binaries for, for Linux and for, for Mac OS. And then we want to add more uh, convenience functions uh, 
right now we only support a subset of what MATLAB uh, offers. And uh, we also have uh, already a proof of concept for an in-browser JavaScript based uh, renderer, which will then have a s functionality like Bouquet or all these tools you might know. A very important thing is uh, we want to add a Qt4 and Qt5 backend as a standalone canvas. Right now we can uh, embed our graphics, but we want to have a complete canvas which will look the same on all platforms and uh, which has some uh, more uh, interactive functions like zooming, panning, and picking data. Uh, there's already a lot of stuff uh, ready to use, but we want to put it into a so-called QT terminal. And finally, we want to improve the three-dimensional performance. Right now, we use OpenGL in a legacy version, and uh, we are currently working on a package called EGS, for, stands for Enhanced Graphics System, which is based on modern OpenGL and will allow us to make uh, all these things much faster and not only to, to visualize about thousands uh, of, of atoms or, or spins, but uh, hundred thousands and even more. So this is what's an example for a visualization of micro swimmers where we need this performance I just mentioned or uh, for the visualization of, of spins, uh, like in this example, which you can try out. If you download the PDF, you can uh, use this code uh, in your browser and play with a JavaScript, uh, which you see on the right side. It's no time right now. And well, that's all for, for today. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Very nice talk. So when I've plotted orbital plots, uh, normally I would have a color map of electrostatic potential on top. Do you um, do you do that, or just for time's sake, you didn't have that on top? The orbital plots that you showed Sorry, from the atomic, uh, I guess, I'm assuming atomic densities. Uh, usually, there's a you would put on a color map of the electrostatic potential. Uh, is that easy to do? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you just need the vectors for, for the positions and for the, for the velocities or whatever you want to wanna visualize. And then you can uh, use simple functions like draw a molecule or draw spins uh, to visualize all this kind of stuff. Um, you had that one uh, demonstration where that blue thing was rotating. Um, and you said that you could embed that in a, uh, a standalone HTML document. Is, is, do you, how much of that, yeah, that one, how much do you, do you lose the interactivity or the rotation, the animation part, if it's a HTML document? Well, right now, you will lose complete interactivity. You, you can simply use it as a static web H HTML5 uh, scene. So you can rotate it, uh, like I showed it with a, with a molecule for the, uh, but you can change, for example, the density here. So in this case, you would have to, to write some code to, to change the, the density parameters here, but that's possible too, yes. Um, you were building uh, animations on the fly. I was wondering in Python, if without using the animation framework that yes. Matplotlib provides, in Python, can you do that through importing the Matplotlib and using your backend, or do you have to import a, a GR back, uh, GR package of some sort? You need a GR package that must be installed on your machine, and then you can, can simply uh, uh, switch to the GR backend in Matplotlib and. Uh, use animations on the fly. So there's no other software required. I have a follow-up question. That This all sounds really great. So um, 
is it really simple to do that process, or is there what are is there a common roadblock? To well, there should be that? some demos on the website, which are on GitHub. Uh, I don't know the name right now. Can try to find it. Some plot. Some plot here. Too much. Okay. Okay. As in this case, we switch the back end here. Then uh, we get into the inline graphics mode here. And this is normal matplotlib code here. And finally, we can then create the animation. Fingers crossed. <laughs> OK, and now you have a original matplotlib animation, but the output has been generated by the GR framework on the fly. And you, there's no need for an animation package, or I don't know what it's called in Matplotlib. I'm interested in the Atom integration that you've mentioned. Um, I use Atom as a lightweight IDE, but I don't really think of it as something where I'm executing inline code. And I'm just trying to wrap my head around how GR fits into that, and, and also how you bring it in to Atom. Uh, this uh, animations are, or the, the 3D stuff is uh, produced by a module called GR3, and you can use that within GR and map your output either into your two dimensional plot in a Jupyter canvas or whatever you want to use, but you can also use your own C program or Python script or, or Julia script to visualize it in a, in a separate window. So it's up to the user how to use all these things. But they are highly integrated. You can mix them. You can mix two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics into one canvas. Does this answer the question? Or? I don't think so. Okay. We can make, make it later. Sorry about that. Have you tried, uh, for, for, for the, the way Matplotlib deals with the interactive uh, Qt, is we just have an ag buffer that we put into the Qt window. Have you tried making a Qt GR backend where you get all of our existing panning and zooming, you know, and all the, all the that integration, but just rendering the ping? This would be the same. Okay. Okay. 